When you hear the word hemp, how many of you start thinking of marijuana? <laughs> well, I'm here to clarify that hemp, although it comes from the same species as marijuana, it is genetically distinct. It has very low to maybe none of THC, so it cannot be used as a psychoactive drug. And it can actually be put to many sustainable uses. And I'm going to focus on one application called hempcrete which is a variety of concrete that is much more sustainable and I will go into that throughout its life cycle analysis. So my name is Ansley Jones and we're going to go through the life cycle analysis starting with the resource stage. So of course the key resource in hempcrete is hemp. Hemp can be grown in very various climates and it is rapidly renewable. It only takes three to four months to harvest it. Um, it sequesters a huge amount of carbon dioxide, about 1.8 tons per ton of hemp, and it is pest and disease resistant, so there's no need for harmful pesticides. And it acts as a natural fertilizer as it adds uh, natural as it adds value to the soil. The other resources involved in hempcrete are lime and water. The lime is made from limestone, which is then heated to form something called quicklime, which has the chemical formula uh, calcium oxygen, and it is produced by heating limestone, which in that process releases some carbon dioxide. And um, just to note, limestone is a naturally occurring uh, substance, but it is finite. As in addition, water is also naturally occurring and finite but um, it, relatively small amounts of water are needed as compared to the amount needed for concrete. Now moving on to the manufacturing stage. Um, this instrument here is called a hemp processor and in this manufacturing stage, a process called decortication is used to separate the hemp into two parts, um, the fibrous bass and the inner woody core, which is also called the herd. Now the herd is the part that is used in the uh, making of hempcrete, but the fibrous, fibrous bass can be put to many other uses, such as uh, making paper, clothing, <coughs> and other materials. In the assembly stage, um, an instrument called an electric drum mixer mixes up all of the ingredients for a total of five minutes. Now they are mixed in a ratio of four parts hemp, one part lime, and one part water, and then it is finished off with a lime-based render. Now for the most exciting phase, in my opinion, the yeast phase, um, hemp buildings have been shown uh, to have great insulation and that leads to energy efficiency and cost effectiveness as less money will be need to spend on heating and air conditioning. Um, in addition, um, hemp buildings have a great indoor air quality because the hemp is breathable and it absorbs water, or absorbs and dehumidifies any water vapor that enters the building. So this leads to a low allergen environment. Um, in addition, hemp is flame, water, and pest resistant. Um, it continues to sequester carbon dioxide throughout the use phase and the lime rendering on the outside of the hemp is also beneficial as it can naturally fill cracks when they form. And these two pictures just show you what a hemp building could look like. And just so you know, hemp can be used as insulating components and as structural components. Now at the end of life, what would happen? Hempcrete is actually um, very much recyclable. 100% can be used to, in future buildings. Um, also minimal labor would be, would be required for demolishing a hempcrete building. And after crushing up the hempcrete, you can also just leave it in place as it will absorb into the soil and work as a fertilizer. Um, in fact, sometimes hempcrete has been sought out for soil contamination treatment because it can um, improve soils that have been contaminated with heavy metals. Now one thing I forgot to bring up throughout this process is transportation. Transportation is probably the biggest area of emissions as 
As I mentioned earlier, hemp is illegal to grow in the United States, so it must be imported. Now, the U.S. typically imports it from China, the United Kingdom, and Canada, and because of all these emissions that are associated with the importing, I want to bring up the fact that hemp may not be a carbon negative material as I further, as I hinted at earlier. Um, so I want to show one more example of a hemp house. This house was made entirely with hempcrete, hemp plastic, and through all of these building renovations it was found that um, the energy savings were as great as 70%. So because hemp has such a great feature, we should push for the legalization of the growth of mm -hmm. hemp in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is it like really just a stigma of like marijuana, like that makes hemp illegal in the United States? Like, like what is the driving factor to make hemp illegal? Yeah, it's years? definitely just its associations with marijuana. But, yeah. <laughs> so. How strong is hempcrete? Could I use it for a slab of a building? Yeah, it's, um, I, ha I have some data that I didn't include in here, so I don't remember the actual numbers, but it's been just as effective as concrete. Um, I can show you that later. And but, um, so there's there's no Portland cement that's mixed in? No. Could I use it on a slab of a big building, like a residential college? I believe so. <laughs> Uh, I can show you some of the case studies I looked up, I and mean, it's used pretty widely in Europe and Australia. <laughs> like, those are some areas that are taking great advantage of it. Send me so. a few selected case studies. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> How did you find out about it? Um, so last year, um, Sophia could also tell you a little bit about this. There's an organization <coughs> called Turning Green that hosts an event on campus, and um, I learned about it because they had an informational table about all the various uses of hemp, and thought it was super cool. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think it would also be like in competition with some like big industries, like the plastic industry, or even like the oil industry, because I think it can be used as biofuel too. Like if it was legalized, yeah. Like, is that kind of why it's? Do you think that's another reason why it's illegal to grow here? Yeah, that might, that's a good point. I wonder if any of those industries have, like, been a part of, like... I actually uh, just Googled it, and apparently it was, like, a smear campaign by the paper industry to, like, make him go legal in the 1930s. Uh, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> one thing I read, this is an interesting fact, about apparently the Declaration of Independence, the first draft, yeah, was on half the paper. Really? Yeah. 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 George, George Washington grew it on. <laughs> 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 